Genesis 1 tells the story about the Creator creating creation. In the story, God spends six days creating and then the seventh day resting. Seven days is baked right into the very beginning of the creation of the world, which means the next day, day eight, a brand new week begins. We don't call that day day eight, we call it day one of a brand new week. Well, Holy Week ends with Saturday, and then Resurrection Sunday is actually day one of a brand new week. We finally made it. This past week, we've talked through the triumphal entry, Jesus clearing the temple, the greatest commandment, the anointing, the garden, and the crucifixion, and now we've finally made it to the end of the week. And today's story begins at dawn of a brand new week. When the sun set Saturday evening, it must have felt like all hope was lost, but a few women wake up early the next day to discover that it's not just a brand new week, and it's not just a brand new day, but a brand new era has dawned. Welcome to Season 5 of Stories in Scripture, a podcast dedicated to telling the big story of the Bible one piece at a time. This season, we are following Jesus, day by day, as He journeys to the cross. No matter what time of year you are listening, this season is an invitation to slow down and remember the greatest act of love of all time. This is Holy Week. Mary Magdalene stopped. She looked quickly at James's mother and Salome. The stone was off the entrance to the tomb, rolled to the side. No one was around. The women closed the distance to the entrance. Strangely, light seemed to come from the darkness of the tomb. They hesitated and exchanged looks. Mary Magdalene stepped into the tomb. On her right, a young man sat calmly, smiling at her as she turned to look at him. She stared at the young man. His skin shone and his robe was impossibly bright. Mary tensed and her weight shifted back toward the entrance. Don't be alarmed, the young man said, holding up his hands as if to stop her. Mary began to tremble, sensing something impossible was happening. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, he continued, the one who was crucified. The women were suddenly terrified. Who was this man and what was he doing in the tomb? Mary and Salome started to run, but Mary Magdalene placed a hand on each of their shoulders. She was just as scared as the others, but she needed to know more. She wouldn't be frightened off just by one man. She had come to anoint her rabbi, and she intended to do so. Yes, said Mary. Where is he? He is not here. The anger came quick to Mary. Not here? Not here? She thought. I have eyes. She fumed. The man clearly knew more than he let on. She would not be turned away. Where? is he mary stated throwing all the menace into her voice as she could in response the man laughed mary was taken aback the last thing she expected was laughter and such familiar laughter too where had she heard it before a seed of recognition began to sprout in her he is risen my friends he is risen See the place where they laid him. He spread his hands wide, pointing to the stone enclave where they had placed the body of Jesus not three days ago. The burial cloths lay on the floor next to it. Risen? Mary wondered. 
What does he mean? Risen. It was all too much for Mary. First, the only man who had ever shown her kindness was arrested. Then, he was betrayed by the very leaders who said they were chosen by God to protect the nation. He was beaten, tortured, mocked, and finally accused of blasphemy, heresy, and treason. That useless Roman governor tried the ruse with Barabbas, but the bloodlust was too great, the danger was too great. So, finally the ultimate humiliation, hung on the cross, death, and now, now his body was stolen from his final resting place? Would nothing be enough? No humiliation too deep for these monsters. Mary broke. Tears sprung from her eyes and a scream racked her body. The man in the tomb was standing beside her, looking broken with her, as if he knew nothing he could say would change anything for her. So he said nothing. He simply stood by her, waiting, a presence. Finally, he said, go and tell his disciples. And Peter. Mary Magdalene looked up at the man as he said that name. She had seen Peter flee on the night Jesus was arrested. She knew what Jesus had said to Peter, what he would do, the unthinkable. And yet, as this stranger said his name, could it be? It's impossible. What would that mean? The man smiled at Mary and the two other women. He looked outside at the rising sun. His face shined, and then he turned it toward them. Go, Mary, tell his disciples, and Peter. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Mary gasped as he said her name. Recognition flooded in. Her whole body trembled at the possibility of what had happened. She couldn't take it. This was all far too much for her still. A risen Jesus? But that, that would mean... That, that would make him... So he really is the Son of Man? Mary and the other women turned and rushed out of the tomb. They fled back to Mary's house, wanting to shout the good news from their roof, needing to grab anyone they met and tell them the amazing thing that had happened. This is the climax of the entire story. From Genesis to Revelation, all of Scripture points to this morning where the tomb is empty. It's a sign. Proof that darkness is nothing more than a beautiful backdrop for the light to shine. Death is not the end of the story. Far from it. For in him, in Jesus, was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. In other words, resurrection is a beautiful picture of light being brought into the darkness, of breath being brought back into the breathless, and of life being brought into the lifeless. Because times feel really strange right now, don't they? Like the world feels like it's hurting, and so it almost feels strange to celebrate Resurrection Sunday to celebrate Easter to celebrate the start of something new but I think it's actually perfect timing because now more than ever we need the reminder that the night is darkest just before the dawn because the sun sets and the week ends but then on day one of the new week the sun rises again a brand new day a brand new week a brand new reality and in this new reality death has made way 
for life. So let's end this season by talking about you. What does Resurrection Sunday mean for you this year? Because again, no matter what time of year you're listening to this episode, no matter what day you are listening to this episode, today can be Resurrection Sunday for you. Today can be the start of something brand new in your life. Jesus' resurrection from the dead reminds us that today doesn't have to be like it was yesterday. And tomorrow doesn't have to be like today. Maybe you're going through a really dark period in your life. Resurrection Sunday is a reminder that although the night is long, a new day is dawning. That this tough season that you are in is real and it is painful, but it is not eternal. It will not last forever. Maybe you're caught up in an addiction that you can't seem to break out of, or like maybe you have a hurt, a habit, a hang up that you want to move past, but you just can't seem to do it. Maybe you find some freedom for a few days or a few weeks, but then you end up slipping right back into it. Well, Resurrection Sunday is a reminder that your addiction, that your hurt, habit, or hang-up is not eternal. There is coming a day where it will no longer be a part of your life. And today is just as great as any other to step up and step into that freedom. Today is the perfect day to start. Resurrection Sunday is the reminder that it doesn't have to be like this forever, that it won't be like this forever, that today can be a brand new day. Or maybe it's critique. Maybe you are right in the middle of someone or a group of people criticizing you for something that you did or something that they think you did or something that you didn't do but they wanted you to do. Well, Resurrection Sunday is the reminder that there is a much bigger and more beautiful story going on and it's unfolding right in front of us as we speak and those who are too caught up in critiquing instead of creating a new and better reality well we just don't have to waste all of our energy trying to keep them happy we can just exhale relax let go and focus our energy on moving the ball down the field if jesus was still in the tomb that would mean we would be stuck in our present reality. But he's not. The tomb is empty. Which means we can take our grave clothes off. We can throw off the things that hold us down, the things that weigh us down, that keep us down. And we can start to live a new and full life today. Jesus has made a way for us to have full abundance abundant life that begins right now and will continue on for all of eternity. Chaos has brought forth a new clarity, a new perspective we never would have had if we hadn't gone through the storm because no matter how dark things may look, light has had and will always have the final say. And so let's celebrate Resurrection Sunday together. Not once things finally get better, but right in the middle of the craziness. Whether you're listening to this on Easter Sunday or some random day in July, the truth is Jesus didn't just die for you. He overcame the grave once and for all as a reminder to us all of us, that we can step into a new reality today. And so let's do that together. Because Holy Week is a reminder that we don't have to save the world. Jesus already did that for us. 
Thanks for listening to Season 5 of Stories in Scripture. We hope this eight-day journey helped Holy Week come to life for you in a brand new way. If you enjoyed this season, we'd love for you to share it with your friends. And rating and reviewing this podcast is also really helpful. We have many more stories to tell, so we'll see you next time for another story.